So hi, hello and welcome again, Microbe Hunter here and one of the things that I really like so much about hobby microscopy, amateur microscopy is that we are able to see the beauty of nature and uh, today I would like to show you again a few very beautiful specimens, uh, as a matter of fact, and uh, plant crystals um, and uh, I would like uh, to also do a little bit of uh, some color play with uh, my microscope so I'll be changing the colors around as well but I need to talk first a little bit about the background um, of those specimens. Uh, as a matter of fact, they were a Christmas present. Uh, I've uh, got a microscopy friend in Germany who sent them uh, to me and he prepared those slides. And uh, these are slides of uh, the stem of a water lily. And uh, those water lily stems, uh, they contain beautiful calcium oxalate crystals that we're able to see with the microscope. And I would like to simply share them uh, with you. Now the specimens were prepared in different thickness um, and some of them were thinner, some of them were thicker and if you look carefully then you're able to um, identify those um, yeah, very colorful, um, strange elongated structures and uh, these structures have an interesting name. They're called idioblasts. idioblasts. And idioblasts are all of those cells or groups of cells that are different from the surrounding cells. So it's a relatively general term. And those idioplasts are responsible for making those uh, calcium oxalate crystals that we can see now under the microscope. The question is now, of course, is what do they do? Why does the plant, why, does, why do the water lilies, why do they make uh, those calcium oxalate crystals? And while the function is not entirely clear, um, there, are, there could be different reasons for that. Uh, several plants produce uh, those crystals um, to make them more unattractive uh, for predators to eat them. Okay, because calcium oxalate, at least also in a higher concentration, can be can be toxic. As a matter of fact, uh, in kidney stones, calcium oxalate can also be found. But I think in this case, especially because we're talking about water lilies, I think it's it's rather unlikely that they're going to be eaten by by predators, um, and uh, therefore um, it is assumed that uh, these are so-called excretory idioplasts, another beautiful complex term. And uh, this basically means that it could be a way how the water plant, the water lily is able to remove excess calcium. So uh, the calcium, if there's too much of this calcium, it's uh, a problem for the plant. And what the plant therefore does is it, it converts it to this calcium oxalate and stores it in those idioblasts. And therefore uh, the calcium is not able to interfere with the metabolism of the plant cells. So you see that, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, those uh, yeah, structures that we're able to see, they do not have a necessarily a necessary a function, but are simply yeah, waste products really. Now, why does the the color change uh, like this? Well, um, in my microscope, I do have a, a prism. I do have polarized light, and I'm also able to change the position of a prism, the so-called the Wollaston prism that I've included. And this um, allows me to change uh, the background color and also the color of the crystal. So I'm able to add a little bit of um, yeah of additional color this way. Now, um, those uh, idioblasts that you can see here are not only found in water lilies, of course, but can be found in a ver large variety of other plants as well. Um, and uh, often those crystals can have different shapes, uh, so-called raphids. These are crystals that are very spike-like and needle-shaped uh, like in structure. Um, so yeah, also the way that the crystals look uh, can be very diverse in nature. Now I've also found uh, some of these crystals in the periphery of the stem. Um, they look a little bit ring-shaped and I was kind of wondering why, why is that? And I think that one of the reasons could be that this might be a cross-section of uh, those idioblasts. So uh, maybe um, I'm just looking at it with a different perspective and therefore it might appear to be round. I don't know, I'd have to do a little bit more research um, on that, but in any case I was very happy that I received those slides as a Christmas present, of course a big thank you um, as well. And maybe for some of you who are looking for something interesting to observe uh, for your microscope, uh, then yeah, I can recommend uh, those water lilies as well uh, because uh, they have these interesting structures here. Well, I think uh, for today I'm going to leave it again at this, uh, please do leave your comments comments behind. Uh, all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.